Harani Mikabel Align Misfasa Se Shelvi Alefta Leria Hakamo Hamatovu Oha Lecha Yaakov Mishkino Seha Yisrael Vani Berof Hasecha Avos Vetecha Estal Havele Lecha Ashecha Veir Ashecha Don't leave Lasi Lecha Donai Trason Elohim Berof Hasecha Aineni Lord our God, you have loved us with everlasting love. You have bestowed upon us exceedingly abounding mercy. Our Father, our King, for the sake of your great name, and for the sake of our forefathers who trusted in you, and whom you thought the laws that, that bring eternal life, to carry out your will with a perfect heart, be gracious also to us and teach us. Our Father, merciful Father, who is compassionate, have mercy on us and grant our heart understanding to comprehend and to discern, to perceive, to learn, to teach, to observe, to practice, and to fulfill all the teachings of your Torah with love. Enlighten your eyes and your Torah, cause your, our hearts to cleave to your commandments and unite our heart to love and fear your name. May we never be put to shame, disgrace, or stumbling. Because we trust in you, your holy, great, and awesome name, may we rejoice and exult in your salvation. Lord our God, may your mercy and your abounding kindness never ever forsake us. Hasten and speedily bring upon us blessing and peace. Bring us in peace from the four corners of the earth. Break the yoke of the nations from our neck and speedily lead us upright to our land. For you are God who performs acts of deliverance and you have chosen us from among all nations and tongues. And have in love brought us near, O our King, to our, your great name, that we may praise you and proclaim your ominous and in, in love, your name. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who chooses his people Israel with love. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Alina Lishabeach Ladon, Ako, Latsit, Dadula, Leo, Shebre, Shis, Shalo, Asanu, Clare, La Reso, Velo, Salanu, Shermel, Savana, Shalo, Sam, Menu, Kayem, Velo, Alinu, Shermasuna, Nak, Nu, Korim, Shakabim, Umodim, Lifne, Melech, Make, Hamalim, Akados, Baruchu, Benemar, Vehaya Adonai, the Melech Yal Kafalopes, Yagom Hau, Vayom Hau, Via Adonai Echad, Ushamo, Ushamo, Ushamo Echad. So I just read from the Torah, um, it was actually the first page, it was, um, it was actually kind of special for me. And um, in this book, right, it talks about the creation, but it also talks about Adam and Eve. And um, I kind of wanted to share a story about that today. So uh, today I f read the first reading in the Torah, the portion of the Bereshis, right? There's so many fascinating and in interesting ideas in this story and in this reading today, but um, I would like to focus on one little detail, which is the story of Adam and Eve, like I said. Um, in the, about the forbidden fruit. So, after having eaten the tree of knowledge, after having been instructed not to, Adam, e Adam and Eve become embarrassed and run and hide in the Garden of Eden. God then calls out, Ayeka, where are you? Why would God ask Adam this, right? Ayeka means, where are you? So, if God knows everything, if God knows where Adam is, then why would he ever just ask, right? So. There are many different interpretations of this, but one of the interpretations that I really like enjoying um, is that he's asking him where he is not physically because God has thermal sight, whatever. He has Adam Tracker on his godly heavenly phone, whatever, right? But he's asking spiritually, right? He's asking mentally, where are you? Are you heading to the right path? Are you going in the right motions, right? Are you doing good? Are you doing bad? Um, are you making the right cho choices? And that's something that, again, God already knows this, but he wants to just make sure that Adam knows this. Um, and I think about this a lot because sometimes I don't always know what the best choices are. My parents can um, back that up. But 
I still try, right? And something important is that we all try. But one thing I've always questioned as well is why is there a choice to make? If God could have made a perfect world, why were there Nazis in World War II and that we're in the middle of a pandemic when I should be able to hug my family, right? It's kind of sad to think, but my friend once told me that if this pandemic started a month earlier, uh, Kobe Bryant, my favorite basketball player, would not have died. And, um, well, not my favorite basketball player, a famous basketball player. In Jesus World, one of my favorite artists have, has also died. If this pandemic started earlier, that would have not happened. And that made me think, what would have happened if this didn't happen, right? I mean, if I asked anyone in this room, I bet you all of you guys would say that you'd rather this pandemic not happen, right? Raise, by show of hands, who would want this, pan, wants this pandemic end, to end? Right, yeah, yeah, I had, a feel, I had a feeling, right? But if, but what would have happened if this did not happen, right? Could, could we have discovered something that would have just ruined even more things, right? So it, it kind of made me wonder, like, what does that mean? And um, I, I kind of thought, like, lightness and darkness, right? What does this darkness do to our light, lightness, right? And we need to find that light so that we can bring more light, right? We want, we see that speck of dot, that speck dot, like, let's say the sun, right? We want to make that light bigger than the sun. And once we make it bigger than the sun, we want it to be the size of our galaxy, right? We just want to keep growing it. And um, I've seen it in action because one Wednesday evening, um, Rabbi, it was time to go study with Rabbi, and it was just, for me, it was just a regular Wednesday morning, right? It was a beautiful day. Uh, it was not this cold. Um, sun was shining, no cloud in the sky, and we, and we show up, and it was, it, was very, it was very interesting, right? I go, and we obviously, we exchanged hellos, right? And we said, how's it going? I said, it was like a normal day, right? I, I have basketball practice, I think, the next day, at basketball, not, not basketball, baseball. Uh, and it was, it was kind of exciting. And he told me that things weren't going as well, right? Uh, recently, he found out that his daughter was sick and has been exposed to people with COVID. And he's, tr he's planning a million different Rosh Hashanah events. This was back in like September. And um, he's trying to get a phone call um, with these people that, with the health board. And he couldn't get a hold of them. And not, not only that, he had a meeting in like 45 minutes, which prevented him from being able to make the call. So there's just a lot of things going on, right? So in the end, after we continued to study like nothing happened, he didn't even mention it at all. And when it was time for my mom to pick me up, um, he didn't mention it whatsoever. All he said was, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next week. Your daughter might have a pandemic level disease and that's what you're saying. I come back the next week and he tells, I ask him how things went and he says everything was fine, right? He could have just completely thrown his mind out of the blue because he was so stressed out, but he didn't. He didn't focus on that. He said, okay, well, I have a lot of bad things going on, but I have one good thing. We're studying Torah, right? And he focused on that because later that week, he found out that his daughter only had strep throat. The meeting that he had later after, after um, our session was postponed so he could actually make the phone calls and everything just worked out. And that, that, was, kind of, that was kind of a big deal for me, right? He could have he just continued to be to be sad, right? I, I mean, I, I'm, again, my parents can back this up. Whenever I come back upstairs for, my, for like a break from my classes online, I'm just like, oh, this sucks. I mean, I don't, I do not want to be on those classes. But it made me think, like, when, what if instead of saying that, I go upstairs and say, well, I just finished two classes. I still have four more to go, but four is better than six, right? So it, what, just, it made me think, like, what, when, what's the next time that you guys can do this? Think of a time that, you, you, again, like came upstairs or went into a room, right? And just thought about something negative when it could have been positive. Because that positivity can just change everything. Um, and you want to bring that lightness into the darkness. And I just wanted to thank everyone here, my friends, my family. Um, everyone here has just brought lightness to my life. And I just want to thank everyone for being here. Um, and thank you for being my light. I just wanted to say thank you for being such a good brother. I couldn't ask for anyone better. Thank you. You think he feels grown up? <laughs> I feel grown up. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> so this happened. Um, it's nice to see all your smiling faces.
You are smiling <laughs> in there, right? Um, in a different time, we would be a little bit more tired from the big party that we had last night. Um, but things are a bit different in 2020. Um, but nothing has changed Harry's studies and the journey that he's been through to get to his bar mitzvah. And we're so proud of you. Where are you? We're so proud of you. And we're so thankful for this all-star team that came to celebrate it with us today. It is so special for us. What me doing today? <laughs> As the first and only child for three years, even after your brother arrived, it was still pretty much the Harry show. <laughs> this is how the day started. With the little brown curly hair bopping into the room, asking, what me doing today? Where are we going? What can I do? What can I learn? The destinations didn't vary much and mostly included some version of a playgroup, physical exercise at the Y, including basketball, maybe the grocery store, and later on preschool. All foundations for your basic life skills. All the while learning who you were and who you wanted to be. I will say your true self hasn't changed that much since then. You still want to go with your friends. You still want to play basketball. You still have a quest for learning and knowledge. Now that you're in middle school, you're building on the foundations of those past years. How do I treat others? How do I expect to be treated? Where do I fit in? What are my goals and dreams for the future? Even though you still have your passion for basketball, your interests have broadened into include baseball, swimming, studying science, as well as studying at Ar Habad and investing time into your Jewish studies. You found another passion in participating at the Ron Burton Training Village, where in addition to getting up at five o'clock in the morning to run eight miles in a rigorous education demands, you were given another context to get closer with your relationship to God and your connection to Judaism. Paving the way for you to move forward with who you are, who you want to be, and what you want to do in this world. What me doing today? What will that mean for you in the future? Where will you go then? Who will you see? What can you learn? What can you contribute? Even though on this day you are a man, this is the beginning. We look forward to watching you grow and navigate the life you choose. We will be here for you with guidance when you want it or when you don't. <laughs> Comfort you when you need it, and we look forward to watching the man you grow to be. We know your Judaism and your Jewish education will always be part of you and be a guide on that journey. Mazel tov. We love you very much. We'll do this again in three years. <laughs> and we look forward to seeing you all again under the chuppah when that time comes. <laughs> all right, uh, just in a... Uh, short speech, and I have some uh, presents for Harry uh, of, of the uh, Juda Judaica kind. Um, but uh, first, I have uh, Perkei Avot, one of my favorite books. And uh, it has lots of awesome sayings in there, uh, things to, to live by and to, to learn from, from our, our sages. And it's to, re to uh, represent how much you love to learn and that it's a continuous journey to continue to learn in, uh, in Judaism. And um, this is the book, and it has great sayings like, in, like um, the world is built upon three things, Torah, hard work, avodah, and uh, gimilut hasadim, like love and kindness. And you want to fill your life and your, your time in this world and your community and your family with, with smarts, with loving kindness and with hard work, uh, help you know helping out in the community, helping out um, with with all of these three things. Very very sage advice, and so the book represents your continuous learning, whether it be science, whether it be Torah, whether it be all these things. Uh, I know you love to learn, and that's what that represents. Also, a very good sign. You're getting one of these. And, you know, if you know the story, of course, with Abraham and Isaac, it's a good sign when you see one of these and, you, and you're able to receive it. <laughs> right? So as much as you've ever gotten in trouble in, your, in our house, uh, this is to remind you that instead of butting heads with people, we don't do that. 
we uh, blow the shofar and, and do gimelut tasadim and um, practice love and kindness and, and, and build up our community. And um, this is for you also. So, very sad. We only have you in our house, I guess, for another four or five years. So we'll continue, uh, you'll actually you still continue to study with the rabbi, which is great. And you continue on your journey, learning um, in, in you know, regular school and, and in your Judaism. And we're so proud of you today. And so happy to have everybody here to fill our lives with joy and, and gimilu tasadim. And we love you, Harry. And we love everybody, everybody here. Thank you for coming. Thank you.